In this video, we will look at the difference between using callbacks, promises and async await in JavaScript. Many people have a wrong understanding about this topic. JavaScript is always synchronous and single-threaded. It is only asynchronous in such a way that it can make, for example, AJAX calls which run in the background and do not interrupt other parts of the code from being executed. Welcome to Noveltech Media, my name is Alexander and my goal is to simplify and explain everything around software and business to you and to keep you updated on all the latest tech trends. So if that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. And now without losing any time, let's get started. Describing JavaScript as asynchronous is perhaps misleading. It's more accurate to say that JavaScript is synchronous and single-threaded with various callback mechanisms. Single-threaded and synchronous means one at a time. For example, one line of code is being executed at a time in order as the code appears. JavaScript has callback functions whose purpose is to allow JavaScript to behave asynchronously so further parts of JavaScript can run while waiting for a JavaScript function that has been executed. For example, let's say a GET request fetching some results from the server. To return back a response, JavaScript will continue to run until the browser has an answer. At that point, the event loop, aka the browser, will execute the JavaScript code that calls the callback function. So in this example, I have prepared three different lines of code. The first just prints the first function, it's a really simple line of code. The second fetches something from the server and the third line of code just prints out the third function. If we run this now, we will see that they don't appear in the same order. The first function executes first, then the third function executes and the second function executes last. This is because the second function, the fetch, is an AJAX call and it takes longer than just the print statement. So it will execute uh, later after the third function is finished. So after we have seen that the fetch API is returning a promise and our JavaScript code is not waiting for the promise to resolve before continuing, we need to have a better approach in order to synchronize our code. For that we can use callbacks. A callback is a function that is to be executed after another function has finished executing, explained in a simple way. In JavaScript, functions are objects. Because of this, functions can take functions as arguments and can be returned by other functions. Why do we need callbacks in the first place? JavaScript is an event-driven language. This means that instead of write, waiting for a response before moving on, JavaScript will keep executing while listening for other events. This is now an example how we could overcome the first problem using callbacks. We still have uh, those three functions, the first function, the second and the third one. I can wrap the console log statement inside a function in order to use callbacks. And the difference is that the first function takes a callback as an argument and executes that argument. The second one takes again a callback as a function and executes it in this then statement. So I have been cheating a bit. I have using then here in order to um, fetch the results, but just ignore this part. Uh, the third function doesn't take a callback because there is no fourth function to continue executing afterwards, but we could still supply a callback. So now in order to execute those functions, we first call the first function. Here I'm using a function. We could also use an arrow statement it would be absolutely the same. Um, and our argument is again a function. We already said that we can pass functions as arguments in JavaScript. And when inside this function, we call the second function, which again as a parameter has again a function, which in turn goes into this callback here. After this callback executes, we call the third function. In this way, we can achieve uh, all those three functions to execute in a synchronous way. If we run this now, we will always have first the first function executing, then the second function, and then the third function. As you can see, uh, this fixes our problem, but this can become extremely error prone. 
If we have a lot of functions being changed, chained one after another, we can get something called callback hell, which is not nice to debug and can really, can really produce crappy code um, if your chains of execution become complex with time. Now let's see how we could achieve the same results by using promises. Promises provide a cleaner way to chain events together. They are generally used for easier handling of asynchronous operations or blocking code, for example, file operations, API calls, um, database calls and so on. There are two parts to understanding promises, creating promises and handling promises. In most cases, you will be handling promises from some library calls like here where we are handling the fetch response. As seen in the code here, the constructor, constructor accepts a function called executor. This executor function accepts two parameters, resolve and reject, which are in turn functions who either return a resolve if the operation was successful or a reject if the operation was not successful. Uh, you can of course decide in your application how do you handle errors. You can still resolve a promise that returned a wrong response and analyze it later. So you don't need always to reject on errors and you can also resolve on an error but pass maybe some custom message which you can later analyze. So let's take a look at this code I have prepared here. We still have the first function, the second function and the third function. The content inside the function is wrapped around the promise so we are returning a new promise with the resolve and reject, reject functions inside of them. I'm only resolving the results here instead of, instead of using console out to print them out. In the second function I'm doing basically the same thing. I'm just returning a new promise and then here I'm resolving the response instead of printing it. In the third function I'm doing the same thing. So here Let's uncomment this part of the code. As you can see, first I'm calling the first function. Since uh, the first function has this return new promise inside of it, I have access to the then statement. So I use then and then I retrieve the data that is being resolved from the first function. After that, I'm just printing out the data. So if I, for example, had the new promise wrapped around that function, I wouldn't have to use this then, I would just be able to access the response immediately. After that, I'm again executing a then function in which I'm, using the, I'm executing the second function. And the same process again, I call then, then I have access to the next data, I console log it, I call then, I call the third function, I have access to the data, I console log it out. So let's save this and run it. And again, we have the first function executed first, second, second, and the third in the third place. But as you can see, we didn't really improve a lot in comparison to the callbacks. It is still pretty messy to come around with that. One other approach to resolve those types of functions is using a promise all, but then we again run into the problem that our response is not in a sequence. Again, we have the same problem. The first function is executed first, then the third function is executed, and the second function is executed afterwards. So, how can we make this much more readable and maintainable? So, there is a third option, and this represents using async and await. Async and await represent an easier way to work with promises. As you can see in this code, I have created an async function. I could have also created the first and the third function also async. In async functions, we can wrap our function, um, aka add the async keyword, at the beginning of the function. Then we can use the await keyword inside the function. And that's basically everything there is to async and await. As you can see here, I have the async keyword and the await keyword inside it. Await means that we are waiting for this fetch here 
to execute and return a response. Only after this has been executed will the code continue to run. So we could have also moved those console log statements inside the second function and it would still work because the first line would be executed first, then we would be waiting for the fetch to finish and then the third function will be executed. But here I have created a new main function which calls those three functions. You also need to create the main function async because we need to await the second function. Since the second function is async and awaiting something, if you didn't use await here, we wouldn't wait for the second function to execute. So we also need to use await here. After that, we can just call the main function and everything will be executed in order. So to represent this, again, our problem is solved. We execute the first function, second function, and then the third function. So as you can see, this way represents a much cleaner and simpler way to work with promises. This is my recommended way and this is the way I mostly go about it um, when using, when working with promises. I hope this video gave you an overview of those three different types of handling asynchronous calls in JavaScript. If you have questions or doubts, just leave a comment down below and I will try to help you with your problem. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.